Hello and welcome back to the ROI channel, ROI podcast coming at you live and direct with everyone's favorite uh, controversial accountant from the, oh, thank you. <laughs> from the South. We're, we're starting it off right. I mean, <laughs> good uh, he's, the, he's the man, he's everyone's favorite, you love to hate character, it's Chappie. We're going to talk about uh, earnings reports for Petrobras, for the Petro Bros. We're going to talk about New Fortress Energy, which people seem to have forgotten about, uh, Ecopetrol, and whatever else we have time for in the hour. Chappie, I thought we'll jump straight into it. Petrobras, what more, okay. what more does an investor need? You've got a super major trading at, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the relative valuation of North America mm -hmm. is they are going to be one of the most dominant players growing their reserves, growing their production with everything they've got in the pre-salt. Yeah. Still dishing out a dividend yield by my calculation. Let's call it, I don't know, mid teens. 15% and, if you bought yeah, today. 15%. If annual you know, going it, forward it, for yeah, next exactly. year. And if you, yeah. if you've been in it for a while, like we have, you're getting, you know, you're already up uh, a ridiculous amount and you're getting paid, I don't yeah. know, 20, 30% yield on cost. What more does an investor need to be happy with Petrobras? Talk me through. Uh, certainty, uh, basically, and the the understanding that what the company is saying it's going to do, it is able to then follow through on. Okay, um, let's unpack that. What are they saying they're going to do? What are the doubts? Well, what, what, what they've said that they're going to do is they've outlined the capital budget for the next five years. They have outlined what they expect production to be for the next five years they have outlined the zero m a that they intend on doing anytime soon and they have outlined the dividend policy the problem is arises when um you basically have the ceo who is uh going up to new york and is sort of cluing in to everybody that hey uh there's going to be an extraordinary dividend this year and then all of a sudden the the minister of mines this alexandria silvieria you know was, he's a real greasy fuck of a man decides that you know he's going to sort of extend this little pissing contest that he's had with um uh praches um for basically the last six months and now he's basically going to sort of publicly embarrass um, Brushes here, which is is effectively kind of what has happened. Um, is that is that the CEO? So he's, he's saying no extraordinary dividend. Pratesh has been yeah. promising everyone there will be an extraordinary dividend, potentially buybacks as well, as I recall. But the, the buybacks, the buybacks are there. They've confirmed the buybacks. So they're, uh, they're they're working on a new program that will be submitted, and um, yes, the buybacks are going to continue. Um, the dividend is going to continue, but it's it, the, the thing is, is that what happened this year is so far. So fourth quarter dividends are a little bit different than the regular, you know, your fourth, third, second, third quarters, where the board of directors makes a proposal for the total dividend that is to be paid for that year in the year, obviously for the year prior, essentially. And what they proposed was, um, something along the lines of, uh, I believe 72 uh, billion AIs. And then the rest is essentially going to be put into this reserve account that was created uh, last year. Uh, this is a remuneration reserve account. Now, this is a, a bit to understand uh, corporate law, all right, a little bit. Corporations are supposed to distribute. Why? Because when you distribute, one, you know, your investors get money, and two, the government collects taxes. Exactly. They, they, they so, let's let's be real. Yeah. Yeah. So, but in, in general, um, this is something that is ignored in the United States, but it's not in Brazil. Okay. In Brazil, they actually had to create a remuneration reserve within the bylaws. Otherwise, they would have had to have distributed the excess profit for the year, which was about eight billion dollars. Okay. Um, so they so, have they have a better use for that in mind they want to create this special that they have told nobody building. what they're going to do with it yeah. i mean that's the problem that's the other thing like you know that's so everyone now has to assume like everyone now has to assume like what the hell is going on here i mean this isn't an american company where mm. you know you go to apple or somebody else and they have just like tens and of, of billions of dollars in excess cash on the books that they don't distribute because 
while they're supposed to, they don't have to. Because in America, it's pretty much just a check the box, you know, where, you know, you say, okay, we, we have a purpose for it. Uh, where in Brazil, they actually, you know, they expect dividends. Um, and that's why dividend yield in, on, on Brazilian equities is, is so much higher than uh, American ones. So, and th with the Brazilian government holding so many of the shares, they mm -hmm. expect those dividends because essentially that's what's well, happening there. So, so rent, right? this this is where this gets into sort of this little bit of a bullshit, or well, not you can call it bullshit. It's 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 a, it's a sort of a it's a, as the as the CFO Sergey pointed out, uh, Sergio, excuse me, um, pointed out correctly. This is. A remuneration reserve allocation. It is dividends that will have to be paid. It cannot be used for capex. Okay, but it's not restricted cash on the asset side of the balance sheet. It's just it's equity basically. It's a remuneration reserve. It's in it's on the equity side of things. Okay, so, so effectively, it's an it, it's an effectively an IOU. Okay, that is it. It will be paid as they said over and over, and they are correct. It will be paid god knows when because that is not outlined in the policy so the most bearish reading that you can take here is that you have the the minister of mines and and various uh people who are in the you know uh our petroleum camp or whatever the hell it is uh the people that chant you know uh that, that basically are very upset that uh new york gave them Ten hundreds of billions of dollars to develop the pre-salt, but now don't want any. But but they shouldn't get any money for that. Okay. Okay. Um, and this is where, this is where this is going to come to a head here fairly soon. But uh, so basically, the, you have this 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 sort of this slush fund now, this eight billion dollar slush fund in the remuneration reserve account. Indeed. whereby, you know, the Minister of Mines and all the various cronies or the people that want to come to Lua who yeah. want their little pet investments and Petrobras can make a little investment here or there. This is the most bearish reading that you can take on this. The management of the enterprise is not on board with this at all. They, they as a you could see, you could feel the fucking frustration coming off of the, because they did not want to be having to answer these questions, they wanted to talk about the fan fucking tastic year they had, because it was amazing. And this is where you get into the problem, where you have like you have a second and third best year on record, respectively, in very in all categories. It's either second or third best, no extraordinary dividend. That makes zero fucking sense. Especially zero. When, exactly when that that capital is not going to be distributed in any other way that as you said that no m a we already know like it, can, it, can, it cannot be used for m a yeah so so what's so, gonna what's gonna happen what's gonna happen so what's this? gonna what, what is gonna happen here is probably something similar to what happened last year which is that you had the board of directors who who proposed half go to a reserve account okay um now granted petrobras was making quite a bit more money at the time but what ended up happening was it went to the general meeting because, again, this is a proposal. It's a proposal that will be approved at the general meeting in April next month. It can be fiddled with, it can be changed, and as and as uh, Parades did, sort of uh, Preches pointed out very uh, that you know they could they can go back and declaring dividends at any time, so they could still declare this. That, that's that that could absolutely happen. That could be the case. But um, what is what will most likely happen there is that they will declare some sort of an extraordinary amount because I guarantee you one, the government wants the money. Like last year, they, they went ahead and just declared the full amount anyway, because you know, it's, 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 it's billions of AIs to the government. So, Absolutely. you know, they can find some use of that. Absolutely. Um, less money they have to borrow and all sorts of other fun stuff like that. Um, so that's being so essentially, being, that's what I think what will happen. Essentially being held hostage Playing game. That's a good way to put about it. Yes, that's a, that's a, that is a good way to look at it. Yes, yeah. um, uh, which is kind of interesting. What if I just had a thought, and, I, and I'm, not, I'm not suggesting this is the case at all, uh, but what if this is some kind of genius ploy? I'm going to share my my screen with the viewers so you can see the sure. recent <laughs> to get them to buy back the shares at a lower value. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. Um, but so in this in this special reserve fund, 
as you said, yeah. it's very it's very vague. There aren't a lot of uh, bylaws that are ironclad holding them to dividends necessarily. Uh, they could use it for buybacks. They, they, they what, can what, use it for yeah, they could use it for buybacks. It's for remuneration. So okay. for basically for paying essentially paying equity shareholders. Indeed. The only issue is that um, the government doesn't. There is there is a there is a, there is a there is a situation where it can be used for losses, but I don't see how the most profitable oil company on the planet is going to be incurring a loss anytime soon. So especially that's probably not when, going to happen. Especially when they've been they've been producing the results that they have at the valuation yeah. that that you and I already thought yeah. was quite reasonable. And if you look at the sell off over the last forty eight hours, I mean, it's a cliff. We dive. the RSI we we we, we pretty much we came down to a level. Um, it, we we pretty much gap filled down to that. Uh, 14 we, we closed at 1475 ish yep. here we we held 15 throughout the day and then we basically sold off sold off into it i i think what what's happened here is the market is 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 holding that level um and then what what will happen next is is one you're gonna have a lot of banks that have been talking up this stock Everybody has gotten bullish on this thing. Everybody's gotten bullish on Brazil. And there's going to be a lot of people that have lost a lot of money, including it's not just the gringos here. Okay. It's also the Brazilians. B3 has gone down too. Maybe not quite as much, but it's gone down as well. Yeah. Well, it, this is the Boves. And if you look at the, um, if yeah. you look at the performance from last year and Patrick Flood look, and I did a, a podcast and he explained if you took out the performance of Petrobras from last year, the Bovespa was actually down. Uh, yes, totally. Yeah, it's what's holding up their damn market. And you have the Minister of Mines who doesn't know where his fucking bread is buttered here. <laughs> Clearly. Um, because, you know, look, Brazil's growing and, and and maybe one day Brazil can self-finance itself. But foreign direct investment into Brazil is quite substantial. And if all of a sudden you have major banks that are a little bit pissed off because you're sort of fucking around with what was a what everybody agreed was a fair fucking proposal. Indeed. Now, pardon my French here because this is bullshit. Okay. Now, Par yes. now Parache's, Parache's basically said yeah. that he proposed 50-50. This is exactly what was in line with what everybody was expecting. So, it would have put four billion, it would have put four point four billion in the reserve enumeration account for their stupid little slush fund for whatever the hell they want to do with it, and nobody cared. Like you can have four point four billion, but we have a record year. So four point four billion also goes to investors and the government. Yeah, to be paid out now and then yes, you to be well, no, to be paid out not just now, probably over the next twelve months. Sure, because sure. you know and how they do these, they do yeah. how they how they do that extraordinary. This they they pay yeah. out way over time. Cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah. you know, but and, the and point is, you'd be was, playing, was, you'd be playing games down. over yeah fifty uh, percent so, of that. Yeah, so so basically, there's a lot of people that are going to be basically, in my opinion, there's a lot of banks that are going to be basically calling right now who are on the phone contacting all of their political allies because Lula has financial backers okay he's not just a member of the the worker communist whatever violent military front or who care you know he he has well-heeled backers people who have investments in Petrobras and people who have lost a lot of money because of this little fucking around that they're doing yeah, yeah. after so after they have said after they have said there's going to be an extraordinary dividend I mean, so this is this is a little bit of of either either we're trying to sort of humble Prachis a little bit here, or That's or what this I was is about to say. or Someone this is Silviaria, or or this is Silviaria who has way overplayed his cards. And I think that's sort of what has happened. And basically, this is bringing all of this to a heel. And ultimately, what is going to have to happen here is one of these two gentlemen is going to have to go. So my next question was exactly on those lines. What's the current relationship between Jean-Paul Bratis and Lula? Is this Lula? They seem to be very good. They seem to have a well, very he was good appointed, relationship, right? So Look, Lula has backed Prates indeed on on every measure, like on the fuel pricing, on everything that Prates has wanted to do. He has backed him all the way. Against Silvieria's sort of like you know bullying and basically saying like hey we want to we want pro we want for we because he's Silvieria is in the camp that that um the government is the majority shareholder and in and, and equity investors you know who gives a fuck about them I mean that that's and that's this, sort of the that's idea to be alienating it himself which is very uh, he's he's not he's not building any allies I can tell you that much. <laughs> 
you can say because that. when you're sending down the Brazilian stock market and you're basically also now threatening New York because 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 by the by this is also ancillary to this but also very important um Paraches has been around he's up in been in America he's been doing a goodwill tour mm. he's been building support and this has paid off up until mm. now you know in that and they talked about this for the first fucking time mm. in nearly probably 10 years they issued dollar denominated debt oh. one point it was just 1.5 billion dollars but it's it was, a, it was big, a small it was a small a little test in yes the, and it was uh, a small little bit of a test to see whether they could do that. And all of a sudden now, if they're now going back on this, all of this goodwill, all of this hard work that Raches has been trying to build may have just gotten totally detonated by yes. this. So this is why I have calls for next week because if they're going to repair this, they're going to do it very fucking quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, because this was this was a royal fuck up here. I mean, I honestly cannot, you know, I, I'm, I am. They could have declared a smaller extraordinary and gotten away with this. They could have done, um, and 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 then and it, because Paraches had to go around and start saving face because well, the one thing that he didn't want to do and he admitted it on the earnings call because he's clearly frustrated mm -hmm. was that he got voted down by the board and no CEO ever wants to admit. That they got voted down by the board because it's the idea here is that the CEO is around. He is speaking for the company, including the board of directors. And if the board of directors is now going back against him, it's a mess. that is, oh God, it's, yeah. it's, it's a massive fuck up by the Brazilian government for one thing, because now no one is going to believe Paraches here. Means so Silviaria, no this is why I'm, Brazil really at the end of the day. And this is why I'm saying Silviaria has to go. Because he's going to have to be blamed for this. Because you look, you you don't you cannot just have this. You you, you could basically blame this on him. Indeed, because this was but just this who was, are the who uh, are the board members? Because that would suggest those board members are giving support to Silvieri, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct. He, the, he's got his lieutenants. He has basically five lieutenants on the board, which is the government's um, backers and they and then there's four for the minority shareholders and then you have Prachis. Well Prachis didn't vote on this, otherwise it would have been deadlocked because it would have been 10 10 basically or five five. He, but he, he again but CEO. he could but he doesn't his story it by protocol it would have been deadlocked anyway and no dividend would have been declared basically okay. which you can't have. All right. So it, it it's basically like okay we're just gonna you know shelve this for now. But but see the thing is, is like yeah and, and then you started talking about Oh, we have to make all of these wind and solar and renewable investments. Well, and then everybody starts freaking out about this. You know, this is going to become the renewable company. Well, no, look, Good what God. they really want to do is renewable diesel and renewable, probably blended diesel. Um, and it's, and and this yeah, has always been, is. which That's which Brazil is already 50-50 renewable petrol with the fuels ethanol, anyway yeah. with ethanol. Yeah, they compete against ethanol. So for them going into renewable fuels. Which they compete with anyway makes a lot of sense. And if we could sell some renewable diesel at a premium to some stupid Europeans, great, fantastic, um, even better. So it, it, it's all just you know that that part of it makes sense. And again, they are sticking to the capex plan. And and as they were very clear to say on the call, they have no plans for doing any M and A. And that's where you get into this sort of this crazy problem here of like why are they retaining all this money? You're not telling us. What you want to buy, you you and you and you swore up and down you have nothing you want to buy. So management wanted to do a 50-50 dividend because management did not see a need to retain an additional four billion dollars for the next year, right? So there you go. That and that's and that's pretty much where we're at. So I think what will happen here, what what the, what will go forward is there's going to be some rumblings from Lula. Okay, and there's going to be a proposal for an extraordinary dividend to be voted on at the AGM of some kind, which that is will probably, yeah. which will be uh, April, the end of April, basically. I think it's April twenty fifth or something like that. Um, and everyone is going to be all nice and happy, and and Silvieria is going to be drawn and quartered, hopefully, wow. uh, publicly executed. And that's 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 what is. He, that is the fate that he deserves, essentially. Absolutely. Meta because, we're speaking metaphorically for the algorithms. Oh yeah, speaking <laughs> metaphor. We're not. We're not actually creating a, a a death threat at all. 
Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, goodness <laughs> me, like, like, oh my, but one it, but it, but And this is why, this is why foreign investors, as much as I love Latin America, we, it just this reminds me of EPF in Argentina in the '90s, where you've just got everyone's got their own little agendas. They, and when you see this separate fund, it just mm-hmm. does not inspire confidence. Oh no, it doesn't. And and see, everybody was happy for them having a little four billion dollar separate fund. That was it. We were good. Look, as long as we had an, a record breaking year, just pay a thirty percent dividend yield on free cash flow. That's right. everybody would have been fine. With that, again, I, I I can't stress that enough. Like without this reserve remuneration fund that they built, like like I said pre- previously, they would have had to pay out the full excess profits that they made, which would have been eight billion dollars, and we would have had a huge, massive ass dividend. So they had to do that, right? Because again, before this, Petrobras was not making money. A lot of people don't realize that that before, basically, two thousand nineteen. Um, when when Petrobras was sort of devoid, uh, they had no access to the debt market. So all of a sudden, they had to one, they had to actually raise fuel to market rates because you know that's just the way it works. So, um, and all of a sudden, they have to they actually had to start making money, and they had to get the pre salt working because when you can't go to the debt market to fix your little fuck ups, what all know? of a sudden you, you become cash flow from operations suddenly becomes yeah, and and suddenly. When it becomes really fucking important, you become the most profitable oil company on the planet because you have to. You don't have a choice. So, you know, and now everybody is like sort of forgetting history here and and forgetting investors that have had to deal with the ups and downs and trials and tribulations of this company for a very long time. And now all of a sudden, you know, people are getting the dividends and uh, some people are very, you know, apparently upset about that. The 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 blue eyed white gringos are, are getting too much. Well, OK, never mind that. I think uh, Prachis has blue eyes and is white. Um, <laughs> but and I think I don't know if Lula has white blue eyes, too. But, 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 uh, what a point standing. Yeah. like this. <laughs> mm. So I, I think it's. It's it is what it is. Look, I I hedged this possibility. I hedged both sides of this, so I had sixteen dollar puts against my entire position that I was. So I was able to ride down this this sell off fairly well. Um, I bought some shares after hours yesterday. Sold those today just for a quick profit because I would be way too overweight even Petrobras with the amount of shares that I bought after hours. It was ridiculous because I never thought I'd see these prices again. And I have calls for going at fifteen dollars going into next week because I do expect. Look, there is there either there is either going to be a correction here or there's not. But honestly, the banks are going to be like I said. There, there's there's a lot of people that are going to be really really upset about this because they've just lost a lot of capital here. So you and... don't get any more selling pressure from those institutional, um, those institutional funds. I I think they're gonna. If if you don't hear something by Wednesday, yeah, you're, you're gonna we're going lower, okay. um, because the problem is is that they need to clarify when this ex- when if you're not going to pay an extraordinary dividend on a on a year where you have on like your let's just be clear okay. second best year ever Absolutely. you're not gonna pay extraordinary dividends on that year when when I- the fuck are you gonna pay them. Yeah. And if that means that you're not going to pay them, then this is going to be priced to a twenty percent yield, um, yeah. which means we're which means we're going I'll down to the, yeah another five percent. Oh, let's see. Uh, what what two? You'd you'd be priced at ten bucks. Ten bucks. That's where you're going. Okay. Yeah. So at so here's here's the deal at ten bucks. I mean, we've we spoken. Yeah, but it's about, a screaming buy we, at that point. I mean, yeah, it's still it's we, still a buy. The it's a buy at fifteen. Yeah, and a, a I mean, it's it's a total pumped. buy here. Yeah. Now, now to be fair, to be fair, you know, the price action day was very good. We saw we saw massive amounts of shares. Well, a lot of selling, but the volume we were going up through. We were going up throughout the day, though, which that's a good sign because that means there is more buyers than there are sellers. Okay. So this is an so they have an opportunity here, and I hope they realize it 
that they have an opportunity to, to fix this without causing a lot of damage to people because you have a lot of people that have taken this opportunity to buy this dip. All right. So they have not all is lost, but there is a precious little window here where yeah, they need to write this ship by like Monday or Tuesday yep. or we're going lower. Yeah. Um. So that's that's and I, I don't know when you're going to get this video out, but just letting people know that's what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, so for so someone other than that, Petrobras's results are great. great. I mean, <laughs> financially there's nothing to complain about uh at all which is why it's so baffling that like to be fair my extraordinary dividend projection is two billion so i'm expecting about uh 28 to 38 percent or 30 cents excuse me uh, so somewhere between a uh a 28 cent and a 38 cent dividend thereabout per share per adr share um for as extraordinary that's cutting what was originally proposed in half but whatever i'll just take whatever i can get um and 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 that would be eked. but okay breaking news breaking, breaking news, news chappy from the desk of proven reserves tell Thanks. me tell me it's good news tell me it's good news oh i don't know uh no it's not i mean it is what it is um so it it is now being just said on Twitter, uh, and, and it's being leaked in Brazil, um, that this was Lou was doing. He ordered the government board of directors, the government appointed directors, to not approve the extraordinary dividend. I think that Silvieria is the man behind this, though. Still, because that Lua, this was Lua's. He's got other things to do. Okay. Um, yes, Lua is going to have approved it. Uh, he will have he would have known ahead of time. But what is happening here is the people that are, were really behind this are now trying to leak this to pin this on Lua so it doesn't go to them. So, so it forces. So, so it actually Sylvia, now. Where, where's Silvia to get all this? Get all this power and decision making ability. From? Well, he's the he's the minister of mines, so. Technically, in natural resources, effectively. Effectively, he is sort of the guy who is sort of over Petrobras. Now, you know, in theory, the the company sort of answers to their independent board. Um, yeah, nominally independent. independent. <laughs> which, which effectively is there for governance purposes to ensure that, you know, something like... Yeah, um, we don't have a Lava, Lava, Lava Yalto. Yeah, like Lava Yalto won't happen again or something like that. Um, but... Yeah, so this is sort of a big deal in that obviously, you know, the fact that they're now leaking that Lula's idea is that they that sort of understand that this is a giant fuck up and they're now trying to do damage control. Um, and, you know, apparently they've been on the phones all day saying like, hey, the dividends will be paid, but fucking when? Because mm. uh, again, it, it comes back to that question I said earlier. It's like, if you're not going to pay an extraordinary dividend on your second best year ever, when? Yeah. When are you? Yeah. Um, when when you can pretty much self fund your operations. And what I'm there, there is no real need here yeah. to. Before, you know. before we move on to the the future looking, what I'm thinking is, well, the government owns most of the shares. Mm -hmm. The idea of having this separate fund is to, I guess, tax plan the divvies, right? So if you have a less good year, you could so, take more out of that well, dividends. This is, but this if is, it's going to the government no, anyway, no, I, I can explain to you. I can explain this to you. Okay. Um, so. There's a loophole in the 45% restriction. Okay. So let's just say, and, and this is how they've all sold themselves on this, this remuneration thing, uh, how they've sold sort of the independent shareholders, and how they've sort of gotten a, a compromise here on this remuneration of, about. So let's just say that all right, Petrobras had $8 billion of free cash flow in fourth quarter. Okay. Let's just say that great. So that that would mean. 45% of that. But let's just say that they had because Petrobras what what let's just say, for instance, they wanted to buy back the uh, RLM refinery. Because okay. if you actually look at RLM and you look at their growth in production, it's sort of unfortunate that they sold it because Petrobras makes more money selling distillate products than they do crude oil. But um 
and it would make sense. Like it's literally 330,000 barrels a day. And it's exactly what their production has grown over the last three years since they've sold that refinery. So let's say they want to buy that, but they don't want to issue debt. So perhaps they do a sale lease back. Well, you can't do that because it's going to, because of gap standards now these days, it's going to show up on the balance sheet because you capitalize leases. And this is where their debt has actually been growing. They've been paying off the financial debt. Right. But what has been growing is the obligations for the leases of these FPSOs. But it's not really debt. You know, you're not it's, it's, you're not going to bank. Not someone's not giving you money. True. You're signing a lease contract with someone who owns an FPSO, voting storage and pumping, a uh, 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 voting pumping and storage unit, um, for offshore, and you have to pay that over time. So technically, it adds to the total debt amount as it is currently considered under the current bylaws. Now, this is where people are kind of worried about this, but look, Petrobras has been actually truly deleveraging on, on the things that matter, which is the actual financial debt. Uh, but if you wanted to do a sale lease back on RLM, you could do that because it's going to increase your debt load. So you have to pay for cash. You have to, you have to do that. So you have a just an example. All right. So you have a large acquisition in one quarter and for cash. That lowers your free cash flow amount. Sure. Far lower than what you you would normally have. So what would what you would do in that situation is you would declare an extraordinary dividend by ignoring the part that is the acquisition. So you have you you still have your forty five percent of of whatever free cash flow is, but you ignore the sort of the one time acquisition part because it's a one off. Yeah, and you declare an extraordinary dividend for that unique circumstance as long as it doesn't affect the financial stability, health, and prosperity, or whatever else of, of and Petrobras, you, fine. And you get that That's, extraordinary dividend would be funded by this fund, separate Correct. Fund. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that is sort of, that's the loophole there in the, is that they can declare an extraordinary as long as it's, as long as it's financially viable. So they can do that. So that's the plan, basically. And that's fine. Makes sense. Okay. Look, you know, they, they want to have a nice predictable dividend. Cool. Um, but yeah, that's that, that that that's a problem. Other than that, be, beyond the fact that you know they're not even a token amount would have done something. Indeed, just for investor confidence more than anything. Yes, it, yes. It, even it, just it, doing, it, even just doing a, t they have fucking sixteen goddamn billion dollars, dollars, dollars with a D, USD, not not real, not hey eyes or the, that that nonsense Brazilian currency. Okay. On their, on their, at the end of the year, they can afford to pay an extra two billion of that as an extraordinary dividend, and that would have increased the dividend to approximately seventy cents for the quarter, and everybody would have been happy. Very Actually, seventy five percent, seventy five cents if you count the regular plus uh, an extraordinary for the year. Yeah. Well. Why? I I don't understand. It would have been a little bit less. But you would have had, and you could have pointed to the capital X plan. You could say, well, if you look for the next two years, we have a, we have, those are our two biggest spending and we want to have enough cash on the books for now. So we're declaring a lower extraordinary dividend this year. But what, but if, rea but in reality, um, they've done a bait and switch. Let's just be honest here. They, they've they just done a bait and switch. Um, they, they promised people uh, you know, hey, we're you're gonna have this remuneration reserve account, and but now it, it so the, look the best way to think about this is until proven otherwise. If you want to be long Petrobras, you want to remain long Petrobras, just assume forty five percent free cash flow, which is what other majors are paying anyway. So it's hardly, yeah. the, end. It's hardly the end of the world. Hardly it really the isn't, world. to be honest. It's not the end of the world. But Petrobras, but you you are in, but but look, you're invested in Petrobras because they're very profitable and they should be paying this dividend out. There is no reason for them not, not to. Yeah. So they have no re they they have no near term um, capital plan. Um. You know, and they're making increased investments. You know, they they've done everything that the government has asked them to do. There is a reasonable bargain here with the market. Yeah. They could be paying a hell of a lot more yeah. in dividends than they had previously. Um, yes. And yeah. and uh, 
I guess we'll see. So, so it is. Uh, it, it's it's a very it's a very touchy situation. Like I said, they have a very very narrow window here to prevent. Because yeah. look, this could go down another twenty percent very easily. That will bring down B three substantially and, and might even actually push the Brazilian economy into a recession. Yeah. Um. And, and so that's a big fucking deal, and I don't think they quite understand. You know the kind of the fire that they're playing with here. Foreign direct investment into Brazil was something like, uh, oh God, let me see here. It was substantial. Um, last year it was in 2022. It was 86 billion dollars. It was 50 billion dollars the year before that. It was 28 billion in, in the year before that. That's growing so, at a rapid clip. Yes. Was <laughs> that that is your that is that is a fairly substantial that, that's ba what 86 billion dollars that is Which one is that, whole, is that is that is a that is a petrobras market cap mm. which um, let me remind people is the bovespa or was at least yes it, 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 it holding, was holding, holding so so all of a sudden all of a sudden if you're fucking around with investor returns that's not good no it's not and and you're gonna find yourself um in in a shit situation here fairly quickly which is why i think that this is going to be resolved. They're going to pay the the extraordinary dividend. They, they might even pay the full amount, uh, at the full the fifty fifty that uh, Prache's um and and then Silvieria will be hung, drawn, and quartered, and and kicked out of politics for the remainder of his existence. <laughs> Sent to exile uh, into yeah the, yeah he, yeah he's he's going to be exiled into deep into the Amazon. I hope well, kicked so. down a mine shaft. I mean he's he's the minister of mines. We should kick <laughs> him down a mine shaft. <laughs> Send him to Germany. I mean, it, send him to Germany and freeze. Oh the, yeah, with, with his with his you know with his bullshit ESG policies or whatever the fuck you know they're talking about. I mean, it's, it's just like you know. So oh. so you have this. So you so you have a management team which is all of Parache's people, who we, they they want to do renewables. They want to do the tran. They they do want to do some of the transition stuff. They do want to decarbonize. That's fine, but they also want to make money. There is a, there is every indication here that these are people that they want to run a solid business, Indeed. and they're not going to go. So, look, my my red line in the sand has been, has been if Praches goes, I still like Praches. I I think he is the right man for the job. So do I. Uh, yeah. He 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 made a fair proposal, of fifty fifty, mm -hmm. of of the excess profits. And he raised foreign capital, kept in yeah, and and he got and he got a dollar bond issued. Indeed, that's that, yeah. which is look. This is this is where you could be really fucked up here, all right? And how and how this could really actually fuck up the 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 prosperity of, of Brazil. Brazil. Um, equatorial margin. You go up and you find something up there. It doesn't matter what you do. Uh, they think there's probably about five to six billion barrels in place. Pretty substantial. There, there is there there is potential for a super giant field up there, right? Doesn't matter what you do, you're gonna have to issue debt to develop that. It's in the northeast region too, so that's Lula's heartland. Okay. All of a sudden, you're now finding that you know you've got a major company that is now going back on what they said. That does not. It doesn't provide, you know, the equity investors don't don't like it. The credit creditors also pay attention to that too, because uh, if all of a sudden you've got, you know, you've got you've got fair proposals and you've got the your your and, and you've got your uh, partner here that you're investing with, because even if you're a creditor, you are investing too. Yeah. All of a sudden they're going back. Look, you're you're gonna find yourself having a harder time getting uh, dollar bonds, and whether you like to think it or not, you need it. You ain't you ain't fucking developing that shit with rubles or yuan or remembi or whatever the fuck. You That's need it. dollars, okay? You need New York. Your bread is buttered in fucking New York. Yeah. Pardon my French. No. But uh, there. But you know, and having said that, there's a fair proposal. Everybody can be happy here, okay? The government can get what they want. They can get some of their other sort of more longer term, lower carbon targets, investments. Everybody's happy, okay? Yeah. As long as it makes money, we're all good. Uh, but you can't have everything. 
You can't have your cake and eat it too. You can't just basically promise the markets one thing and then just completely give them the middle finger. That that is not gonna fly. You know, it's not. And I think and I look, I'm and I'm and I'm serious. They're gonna find out here. They're either gonna double down on this nonsense, and I'm probably gonna be exiting Petrobras if they do. Um, or uh they're gonna basically fix this. And I think they're gonna fix it. Um because what I'm thinking is your as you're articulating that idea, I'm thinking if this goes the wrong way, what's going to happen to my offshore thesis with Petrobras contracting most of these rigs with the idea? Oh, rig is fucked. <laughs> yeah. Trans, <laughs> Transocean's <laughs> fucked. No, no, no. Yeah, they're, they're done. And, and you're also going to have a lot. It's not just Petrobras that's in there too. You're also going to have a lot of those foreign majors that are operating down there. All of a sudden, they're going to be reassessing too. Because again... You just cannot say something and do another at that because, level. Yeah, at that level. Because look, you got you got Exxon, you got Shell, you got all these guys. They got to get a return on their investors. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, you're not doing an extraordinary dividend. Well, maybe next time you're raising the royalties or the taxes or the bullshit or other bullshit, and they're going to be reevaluating that too. And I I can tell you right now. That there's, like I said, there, there is going to be some very serious angry phone calls. And, um, you know, credit matters. Credit controls everything. Absolutely. You don't have access to credit. Absolutely. You don't have an economy. Yeah, absolutely. And so there's going to be some fairly angry bankers. And, I, and I'm, I'm hoping, look, Bank of America has already dropped the price target by 25%. It's very substantial and probably it. too much. And too much for just the fact that they're not paying an extraordinary dividend. But I think it's also necessary. I, I think it, it is necessary to say that, you know, th that is a that is a very much a we are not fucking happy with you right now. Um, yeah. To, you know, and, and frankly, I would probably lower my price target, too. I think it's right now it's where it, it's exactly where it needs to be okay. until they until they fix it. You know, it, I, I I like it where it's right here. You know, yeah. I, I uh, it, if you know, I don't I don't see it really going above here for a while if unless production is significantly increased so you could have sort of growth in in uh in your uh free cash flow that way but other than that you know i mean i, I own this i own this from like 10 bucks so it's, it's yeah i mean i'm in i'm but... into single digits so it's not the end of the world let me let us wrap up petrobras you can grade my homework so here's okay. an, here's a, uh, i'm just going to read from an executive summary that I've done from quite a while ago. So disclosure there, but my key points, okay. Production estimated 2.88 million barrels of oil equivalent a day growing with monopoly and offshore rig contracts focused in pre-salt mm -hmm. shelf. Maybe, maybe not now. Uh, historic margins of free cash flow about 15% in a 50 to $65 Brent environment, break yep. even roughly 35 reserves. We think close to 11 billion. So that's roughly 10 X, uh, 10 years of stay flat production at a free cash flow or market cap, the free cash flow 20% or 5x. I am buying and hold, I'm skipping all the way down. I am buying and holding with a price target of $41.22, discounting $70 rent. Um, however, I also have put in here, they've announced a 40% of free cash flow will be distributed to shareholder returns. So it does, it does hinge on that. Your thoughts on my previous agree, agree, I agree. Everything with that there. Uh, look, my price targets are bound forty to forty five dollars. That's what I think it's worth. Yeah, uh, and I think that's even with a slight discount, you're not going to get what you're not going to get like a twelve times multiple. That you you're not going to get a rewrite. No, so that all of yeah. this is basically so free cash flow returns. Is yeah. Well. So so if you're if you're basically going to limit free cash flow returns and and you're just going to turn this into a little slush fund here. Uh, because they can't issue debt because if you issue debt, then, you know, you, you can't have the, you can't have the dividends unless you change the policy, but you're going to have a hard time doing that. Yeah. Um, okay. So they have to, so, so in order to fuck around with this, they have to create a little slush fund here with it. And, and, you know, and I think that unfortunately it sounds to me like that's what they're kind of trying to do. Um, and uh, that, doesn't, that doesn't seem like the way, the way forward. It seems like that typical, emerging nation snatching defeat from the jaws of victory and 
Uh, uh oh yeah yeah Th this is this is a, this is a look tonight. look uh if you're playing if you're playing football this is a pretty bad own goal yeah. honestly yeah i mean this this is this is this is an own goal and then you you, you went and did it again like 30 seconds later yeah. i like i like how you call it football that's very european of you chappy well and and also and, and brazilian so you know <laughs> oh yeah yeah well I, I i do call it football because it's football you kick Correct. it with like it's it's football correct you're, uh, you're, you're a culture even man. though t technically what americans play is gridiron football is what yeah. it should be called so uh um, so this is this is interesting and i mean it was just my thesis was all looking good the dollar has rolled over if you look at the dxy and it's okay mm -hmm. it's a great chance for foreign capital to come into places like brazil it's all oh. great. rate is going to flow through i'm going to get paid and they're uh, cutting and they're cutting rates they're cutting rates which <sighs> then i can get paid in from petrobras i can get paid i paid in my offshore re-rating it's all looking good and it's all just given a little and this was this was and yeah. this was all part of Silvieria's like his his pitch like that, yeah oh yeah we're, the we're gonna cut rates the the the, the capital will the, they'll start bidding it up again we're still paying we're paying more than, than all the other exxon people it doesn't matter what you did you told the market you were going to pay an extraordinary dividend and you got to do it mm. you, you don't pay it next year don't pay it the year after that do whatever you want yeah make adjustments but adjustments. but but you told the market you're going to pay it this year. And the market was exactly. expecting that you were going to pay it this year. And you can't just go back on your word like that because the only thing that the market has, and I'm being really serious here, is look, is, is that management is not lying to you and that they're presenting the financials fairly. Financials that we see are not totally 100% accurate. I guarantee you it's not... It could be off by several million dollars yeah, because that's talking, not material. A, okay? a, behemoth, a behemoth company here. Yeah. So it, is it fair presentation? And it doesn't have to be 100% accurate. It has to be fair. And, and, and the other part of that is management cannot lie to you. And if management's lying to you, then the market can't trust anything you say. Yeah. So, and, and, it, and that, that's... Yeah. I think it's unfair because Pratesh was not lying. He Pro, just, yeah, Pratches. They, no, they, yeah, they just was, rug pulled was, him. They just rug pulled yeah, him. Yeah, they no, yes, yes, yes. This was this was a total, yeah. you know, fuck you to Pratches. And I I and there is a rumor that Pratches threatened to resign. He has denied it. He was probably convinced. He was probably convinced by his people to not do that mm. and to stay and fight. But you know, this is huge. I mean, this was hugely embarrassing to him. And and you could you could feel that he was very, uh, they did the the they did the conference call now in a very unique in a new way because they always like changing shit. Um, instead of everybody having in their own office, maybe there's no longer COVID protocol or some shit. I don't know. But they all did it in one big room, so they had everybody in the room together, yeah. and uh, with the translation, of course, and they and they started thirty minutes later, whatever, fifteen minute, twenty minutes late, of course, because it's brazil uh so you know he was very frustrated on on the call Understood. um and i think he's very much not having a good go of it right now because he has worked and he's very proud of the fact of, of the appreciation in the stock that he has That's been able to to guide this thing where he, he's been able to guide this thing where the government gets what it wants and the investors get what it wants everybody was winning Everybody was getting, we were all having a good party and enjoying each other's company. And then all of a sudden the government decides to do this. And that's, look, I, I love Petrobras. I want to remain, I want to, I want to keep owning this company because I think it's, it's got fantastic potential, so do I. but you can't do that, but you can't, I can't recommend it. I can't talk about, it. I can't tell people like, oh yeah, I'll buy Petrobras here. Cause I can't, yeah, even though I think it's a fantastic price. I mean, there's been people who have been asking me like, hey, you know, we 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 dropped down to like, oh yeah. I mean, I'm looking back at like price action here. I mean, I remember people asking me like back in February or back in January, like, hey, we were at fifteen fifty on PBR, yeah. and 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 somewhere around there on PBR, and they were they were they were asking me like, hey, do do I do I buy here? And I'm like, yeah, it's probably yeah, you're good, yeah.
We're expecting an extraordinary dividend. Uh, may not be as big as everybody thinks it's going to be, but you know, we, we should get something. I, I mean, I, I was thinking around the 70 cents of what total dividend was probably going to be where it could be. I didn't expect us to, I, I didn't expect them to pay like a full dividend. Yeah. I mean, I, I really didn't. Uh, cause I, I thought, you know, Hey, they've, they've got projects and they've got stuff they want to buy and that's fine. Yeah. Um, as long as it's a creative, then who cares? I, I, it's like, it, it's, it's, when I'm an investor, invest in stuff. Cool. Um, but at the same time, you know, this is, this is, this is kind of hurt my confidence here a little bit. I mean, I, I don't like that at all. Um, but no one does, we'll see. I, I think this is going to get resolved, uh, because I, I just don't think you can't, this is just, you know, yeah, you can't do this. So okay. moving slightly North of the border, Colombia, Ecopetrol, you and I have spoken a lot about that in the past we will keep this concise echo petrol challenging political environment my, Very, more my, so even than brazil sure my worries are not so much around that but what it means for the sustaining cap and maintenance capex for the company are you still bullish echo petrol we have had a, a reasonably sharp sell-off what do you uh, I've I exited that at a higher price. If we get back down to, let's take a look here. If we get back down to like sub ten, uh, maybe like nine, so I'm 50, nine seventy ish. Okay. You know, I I think I would uh, I mean, look. They've announced the new dividend, and the market is is repricing to that dividend. Um. I think the market is 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 looking for about a fifteen to twenty percent yield here, and right now, um, they are they they've they've announced what they intend the dividend to be for the the next three dividend payments, yeah. um, and you know that's and this and the stock, market's is this is stock has sold that, off. So. The sell off here has been more brutal than that in Petrobras. I mean, you're looking this yeah is so far we've died just broken below two hundred day moving average. So probably yes. more bearishness. So even. and and oh, and look, and Petrobras did finish above its two hundred day. Yeah. So when I when I said the market is like taking it to a level where they're going to wait and see, that's your wait and see level. So, but for Echo Patrol, I mean, look, the problem with Echo Patrol is they don't have the reserve replacement rates. Um, fracking is not allowed there. Not that I'm a big fan of fracking, anyway, because I don't want to. I don't want. I don't like the fracking treadmill, but. Um, it's just a lot there that it's it's more politically contentious, unfortunately, than than Brazil. And it's not, it's just not Petrobras. Petro, the reason I'm in Petrobras is because it's like you know if you're comparing it to, it's like you got a, an amazing growing reserve ratio, you got a lot of profit. Whereas yeah, Eco Patrol is cheap, and it's also cheap for a reason. <laughs> so I mean, it is but roughly, a good, but if you believe the the reserves, maybe two billion. BOE. If if you were to yeah yeah and it's pretty good like if you were to get a regime change there, which I think is going to happen. No, you're going to have to wait two years though. Yes. Uh, if then at, then if yeah. The then Echo Patrol is a the buy. municipal elections Q4 last year. It was a whitewash. Petro lost all except for one. Uh, well, of course it did. He's yeah, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's, a, he's a he's a stupid he's a stupid socialist and and nobody in South America likes that shit anymore. They don't even like it. They don't even like it in Venezuela. They just can't get rid of the the the, the, the guy. Yeah. You know, they they have to ban the opposition from the 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 the, the ballot. Yeah, could be. Yeah. Be yeah. yeah so, so for me, like, I'm in. I'm. I'm. I'm in a wait and see for for Echo Patrol. But right now, I think I'm not like in the year over year growth. So I've exited that position. I took profits on it, and I'm I'm seeing where it goes. It's it's on a watch list. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. But, um, so here's yeah. my, here's my excerpt from an exec summary done again a couple of months ago on EC. I've mm -hmm. discounted the free cash flow harshly at nineteen percent, reflective of the Colombian ten year yield plus equity risk premium that remains similar today as when I wrote it. Um, if one were to use maybe a twelve percent um discount, which might be closer to the weighted average cost of capital price target of twenty two dollars is implied $70 oil over four years. The ADR yep. traded above 17 only 18 months ago before Gustavo Petro was elected. Right, yes, right. This changes. Yeah. This, 
I mean, this this one is totally politics. Um, and and I think it's uh, if you do get a change, a sea change there, uh, look, Echo P uh, Patrol was was hurt horribly by the fact that they decided to keep this royalty tax dividend bullshit. Uh, yeah. double dipping that they decided to go and, and do it, it got um, overthrown in the supreme court though and then they and then they kind of, double, but, they, but they're somehow yeah but they're still somehow doing it i mean or they they found another way to do it i guess or, or however else um it is what it seems like it's happening here uh so it, it ultimately you, you've got the you've just got too much government interference there um and the capital markets hates government interference. <laughs> like you could tax things, you could do whatever you want. But there yeah, is a fair balance for everything, but you have to tell us what the fair balance is and you cannot just go back on it. And, you know, there's something similar to be said here uh, of where you have the government deciding to sort of uh, push their luck a little bit. So, okay. but ultimately, yeah, I agree with your price target. And uh, if if you've got a long term view and you've got a lot of money and you're fine with like a ten to twelve percent yield, which is what you're gonna get at this price, it suits me down to the ground. Yeah, whatever, you know, just uh, I keep can, holding. I can juice that yield with some covered call writing and wait it out. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. perfect. Um, so. Now here's one that you do like: New Fortress Energy. Oh god. Let's talk about New Fortress Energy. I have re I had reduced my position quite a lot only because I thought gas is fucked. Um, Who cares? Doesn't yeah. matter. Talk. Tell me why. Tell me why, sir. So look, look, look what happened uh, to JKM and TTF in fourth quarter. And what did uh, NFE do? And if you had a massive profit and everything was just going swimmingly, why? Because they don't have cargo sales anymore, uh, which is a huge fucking deal. Um, and you wrote a really biggest... piece on your Substack about the vertical integration that this company yes, has. Yes, to actually uh, to understand this mm -hmm. as to what exactly is New Fortress Energy and the fortress that is New Fortress Energy. Yeah which is ironically something of a Brazil play in the grand scheme of things, um, because that's where their growth is. Now, before going into earnings and still, so there, there's two primary concerns as it stands right now. One, they think that Puerto Rico is is, is going to just implode. Yeah, what's, okay. why? What's what's happening there? I don't, I don't understand. Because FEMA is pulling out and the rather lucrative contract that they got to sell power Mm. might be go might have to be renegotiated who gives a flying fuck is what i have but, to tell you but the um, infrastructure the infrastructure there is all built puerto rico needs as much power gen as it can get because the power yes these That's these like okay so so look look fine let's say the government of puerto rico decides to buy these units they've already said that they want these gas units in san juan to stay okay yeah. and and everybody's fine with that so if they buy them they're gonna have to buy them at fair value great who cares uh, they're going to need gas for them. And the only way to get gas is to go through NFE's terminal. Because NFE has the, pretty much the only material terminal for gas, LNG, into Puerto Rico. So who cares? That is they it. already, and, and they have a 10-year contract to manage the grid. And there is, you know, a half dozen potential projects that they see in Puerto Rico. Yeah. So basically, you, you, you had some stupid anal holes analysts might as well be anal holes at city who were you know getting really bearish on this and on the call they were like guys this really isn't a big deal like if we renegotiate we renegotiate but we, we have every intention of staying in puerto rico and operating there we have a terminal and it, they really stressed that and i and i stressed it in my in my flow chart yeah. how important the terminals are and why they call this a franchise it's sort of like a cable term you know, for cable TV or in the United States, well, it's, a good, it's a good analogy local, because yeah, where you have a you have a monopoly gas, yeah, and you effectively have a monopoly Absolutely. to that. Yes, so this is where the fortress part of New Fortress Energy comes from, really, in my opinion. Now, I don't think they 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 figured they they named it, but this is the moat, effectively. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Replacing this company with the amount that has been spent. Is would cost billions of dollars. How many? And, how many? How many baseball fields is? That? How many football stadiums is that? 
in terms of oh at, at least five <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's it's uh so so the the other problem is um fast lng1 has just been delayed now it, it's been delayed and delayed and delayed they should be saying that we have first liquid. They probably even have first liquid, but maybe they don't understand that they really need to say to the market, "Hey, we've got first liquid now." Mm. Uh, so that so they had an LNG tanker, the Orion C, come by and essentially give it what is called the heel, and I refer to this as basically priming the system. So because you have to have a certain amount in tankers in 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 the tankers in Penguin, you have to have a certain amount of LNG as you take on more LNG to keep the LNG cool. cool. So okay. they call it the heel, basically. Uh, so the, the heel was delivered. Yes. So so first liquid should be happening any day now. Never mind. Never mind the fact that this is a company with an utterly insane revenue and profit growth rate. Unbelievable. And, so as of 20, and it's trading 2019 forwards, like 43% compounded. Um, and then admittedly, a few of those years are expected into yeah. the future. But this thing is just like a and it's trading at six, and it's trading at six times forward oh, earning. earnings right now. It is remarkably stupidly cheap with for... no, no, no more investment capex, really, right? Like it's correct. They, yeah, they, every, they, they weren't going to do it. Everything at this point in time is financed or earmarked. There's there's no more. Um, there's really no more offerings that they have to do that's not just going to be refinanced or uh, that's not a refinance, basically. So that they don't need to issue more debt. Um, not to mention the fact that Brazil in two years is literally going to double their top line revenue. Yeah, and that's just sure. and that's just a Barcarena. Yeah, and that's part of your what you were saying in your um, really good article about it is that look. Worst comes to worst, it doesn't really matter about Puerto Rico because where the growth Puerto Rico, is Brazil. Puerto Rico is Puerto Rico is it, you could you could nuke Puerto Rico and it does not matter. But really, it doesn't. Um, so everybody is is as I as I was saying, you know, is is missing the fortress for the trees here. Yeah. Um yeah. and yeah. it's it's and it's remarkably frustrating that this thing is not over forty dollars because Look, it's an infrastructure company. It should be given a infrastructure multiple, which is twenty times. Yeah. Now I understand it's not going to have that. Yeah, and I'm not. Going I to think give it that until. And the... I I think ten times is fair. Okay. Oh, with yeah. their growth rate. Growth ten rate times plus... forward. With How with with the fact that they're place this. So who's who's going to compete with these guys? Who's going to let's say we get. People think of it as an LNG carrier, but it's not. It's the terminal. No, it's not. No, it's no, no. Yeah, and they were, and they were, and they were very in LNG yeah. carriers. All you want. The point is, those carriers have Correct. to take to a terminal. Who owns the terminal? Da da da. New fortress. New fortress. Exactly. And and they are. And not only that, it's not that they own the terminal. It's they own the supply contracts and the power plants is what they really want beyond that. Mm, okay. So they have re – because when you go into Barcarena, for instance, okay, they go in and they have a terminal. Okay, Now they have an industrial partner there, an aluminum smelter that they can sell to. Uh, they have an agreement for uh, so many Terra BTUs annually. Okay, Then they also are building uh, over three gigawatts of power. Okay, Now – when they dispatch that power, they get a premium of uh twenty percent over JKM, right? Okay, so, so now that is my next question. When you're talking utility type plays selling power to the mm -hmm. grid, oftentimes the government steps in if things get too pricey. So the way power. that the way that the Brazilian you you have a basically a day ahead auction, and it's very transparent, and everybody sort of bids into it. Um but it doesn't matter in a lot of ways because that's just sort of the that's the that's the vig beyond that you know because what they get is on the on the fuel costs they have a guaranteed margin in addition to that they have a 200 million dollar annual payment just for being there able to offer power right so, so how do they have how do they with their fuel costs is that because they have Fixed contracts for the gas they buy. Where do they get the gas from? As a so, 
they can they can get the gas from in the future they'll get it from fast lng um and then they'll also get whatever they need in addition from uh sabine pass basically okay. uh when, so before it becomes lng where do they get the net gas from well that doesn't really matter to them now you could get net gas they could own their own net gas supply but they canceled that contract with pemex to develop that field well you guys it doesn't make gas sense is so damn cheap at the moment because the yeah yeah Mark. And they're not really and and look the the LNG plays like Chenier, they offer they operate on a cost plus basis anyway and they've operated and they have that contract I imagine with with Chenier and whoever else uh, on a cost plus basis, so um, they buy the gas from them and they transport it, but there's always going to be a margin there because they're competing with diesel fuel, because that's your alternative it's either gas or diesel so they have a set margin that they get and what they really want is the that that margin comes into play on the power side of things when they sell the kilowatt hours because that's where they really get the juice Absolutely. essentially Absolutely. uh you could sell the gas all you want but making it but why into would you electrons it? exactly when you can sell yeah, it but when you and it's yeah. what, the price yeah, exactly exactly yeah. it's it's in the electrons where you make the money Absolutely. so the kilowatt hours is where is where the money is made uh so that's why they like. That's why Puerto Rico is such a huge cash cow for them because their power plants down there were dispatched ninety seven percent of the time, which is a lot. So they get a margin on the gas, they get a margin on the power, and they get a fee just for having. And of course, then they have terminal fees as well. So it's like there's there's so much there that they that they have that is just why this thing is just going to be an absolute juggernaut. Um, and again, it, it is, I, I just, it's just like, you cannot say this enough. Like it's, it's growing revenues at leaps and bounds. Unbelievable. Um, yeah. and, and profit is just, has gone from a loss of 182 in 20, 182 million in, in, in 2020 to a profit of 97 million to a profit of 194 million to a profit of 547 million. And it's going to double again this year. They are basically saying like, hey, we made two times, we made $2.6 uh, dollars a share. We're going to make five plus this year. Yeah. And Trading let, at a, me, yeah. let me throw you some numbers at you. So from 2019 to 2024, albeit hasn't been announced yet, gross yeah. margin growth or expansion, 62.6% year on year from 5.8%, 38%, 53%, 54%, uh, 2019, 2020, 2021, and 22, Take, 23. Yeah, yeah, amazing. Take a look at September to December, quarter over quarter. And you got something that you got, you rarely, rarely ever get. Okay. And that is revenue growth, significant revenue growth. And a much smaller cost growth. It was about four to one, four so, to one revenue growth over costs from oh, fourth quarter year. over so, third okay. quarter. Yeah, take a look at that. That is a that is a rare thing, and that shows you really that 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 and that was because they brought all of these assets into operation here. Like yeah, you go to go to yeah quarterly here, and it just uh not no go over to the financials. Go over to the financials. Um, and you can see what I'm talking about. Um, you're, it'll be up. Uh, yeah, there you go, right there. Um, so just go to quarterly and the income statement and, uh, yeah, so looks like we're there. Uh, you can reverse it if you want, uh, cause I, I usually do it. At, uh, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so you'll see here on the, on the far left, far right, right, uh, you got revenues. Like look at that quarter of a quarter revenue growth that, that revenue in fourth quarter is not sales. That's just their business right there is not sales of assets. Nothing else like that. That's that, that's their business. And no cargo sales either. And that's why they were not exposed to JKM or TTF. So TTF and JKM went way down. And if they were exposed to that, they would have had a shit quarter. But they didn't because they are not doing cargo sales anymore. Fantastic. Love that. All right. Then take a look. Take a look at this, at the selling and and and, and just the, the the change in quarter over quarter there in, in ultimately in costs. All right. You can you can sort of go down the line, but you can see total operating expenses goes up by less than a hundred million dollars. Yep. And then you go up to revenue and, and you see that and it's like, wow, that, that went up 
quite substantially. So, so, so effectively, um, you got this very rare thing where you had costs that went up very slightly, but you got revenues that were way up. And, and that just sort of told, that shows you the, the kind of earnings power that new fortress energy has once they get all these assets that I am, I am ridiculously fucking bullish on this because it is a, this one is, it is, and it is stupidly underpriced by the market. It is, yeah. I mean, I, I'm guys, I'm, I'm just like, stop paying attention to like, you know, oh, oh, natural gas is selling down. We got to sell new fortress. Day. No, who That's gives a shit? The, natural gas where the earnings who, are. For yeah. This. Who gives a shit about TTF? Who gives a shit about JKM? Who gives a shit about Henry hub? Mm -hmm. These they they these guys operate in captive fucking markets. If you want to worry about something, worry about the price of diesel. In comparison, if the diesel price is going down, then yeah, you can sell. And then then that, that's the only time because you be people would NFE go down. People would switch to diesel generated power. Is that because diesel? Yes, because diesel turbines or whatever else is your is your alternative to LNG. So your LNG price on a curb on a kilowatt hour basis is capped. At the price of diesel, diesel, because yeah. you so have the, that's what you really compete with. Power source um, in the event exactly. Yeah, and again, this is this is a company. Look at look at what Chenier trades at. Look at what uh, all these other LNG plays, these infrastructure plays, these pipeline plays. That's what it is. Look at yeah. what they look at what they trade at. They all trade at a twenty times multiple. Okay, and you have an infrastructure utility here that is trading for six. It is remarkably cheap. Um, now, is, yes, did they increase? Is did one they, thing though. Did they increase the dividend? No, they didn't. But that's because there's still stuff that they have to pay for. Um, they do like, have a on. lot of debt, and they they do have yes. A, a quick, they have a current and a quick rate of less than one. So you know right. there, there there are some liquidity issues. Let's but say. remember, but remember, we now have this current quarter that is going to have that increased earnings power going forward. So you're going to see more earnings here that, you know, like, let's just say like what you're, you go over to the balance sheet here and yeah, you've got, oh, let's see here, your current ratio, uh, 907 versus uh, 160, one, one, uh, 760 or 1.7 1. billion. Well, okay. So you're, you made 200 million in first in the fourth quarter alone. Like, I don't remember, like all that profit and you're putting even more assets into operation. Remember, the Brazilian terminals did not come online until March, like end of end of February, March. So what are they going to generate yeah. bottom line so, every, or next year or this year? End of end well, of I, again, I mean, I think you're you're gonna be looking at about five dollars EPS. I think that's being conservative, by the by. Wow. Uh but but you're gonna be looking at about Oh boy, you're gonna be looking at, at approximately well over uh, probably about 1.1 1 .1 to 1.2 billion in bottom line profit. I think. There we go. Uh, never mind. Never mind. Ca ne never mind. They were very important to point out. Cash flow will grow with that. So your cash flow per share is gonna be like seven or something. So, uh, and and they're saying that that is going to continue to grow. That's not the end here. Sure. So, and you've got uh, fast. Do we want a dividend with this thing? Or if we're of the opinion that the CapEx is done, everything's in place, previous shareholders yeah. paid for all that, and well, I come in now. So we've got six point five billion yeah. to pay down. We I uh should pay yeah. that down first. I, I would I would be happy with doubling the dividend throughout the course of, of this year. So yeah, first quarter will will increase the dividend by, you know, a couple cents. And then we'll go up to like 20 cents by the end of the year. I would be happy if they, I'd be fine if they did that. I don't know if they do. It doesn't matter. matter. Uh, with this one, you've got such strong growth that uh, it's fine. You okay. know, we're, we're not, we're not at a mature stage yet where it's time to start collecting the dividends on this. And the, so the, I'm debt, fine the debt wall is a long way into the future. If you look at the current portion Correct. of long-term debt, it's only like 292 million bucks. And that's what, nothing. And they can afford to pay that. Absolutely. I mean, they can afford to generate the the cash flow, um, the to pay down this debt, um, and there's and 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 to do what they're going to do. Uh, so I'm fine with that. Yes, debt is a big deal, uh, but they did just do they just fired off a a, a major refinancing, so that probably handles the debt for this year. So a lot of that what you what you were talking about on the, on that current ratio. Well, yeah, you've got 
uh, you, you had about 300 million in, in long-term debt there. And you had some accrued expenses as well, most likely, mostly related probably to finishing up uh, the NF, uh, fast LNG project. Um, so yeah, we're paying that off and uh, we're, going for, we're going forward. But like I said, this one is, this one is one that, that the market is ignoring and, and, and they're being a little bit stupid about it. And, and to be fair, you know, look, there's several, I, I've said, you know, I, I think where the bullish catalysts are is the announcement of first liquids on fast LNG and then the first cargo. Because once you have those two fact things happen, then now you're getting LNG at a lower price, right? So it's even more addition to, it's even a, a greater profit uh, expansion, margin expansion uh, on the bottom line. So, so would you guess prices mm, potentially leading to increased margins for this company because they're not selling gas? Uh, yeah, yeah, you could you could definitely see that happening. You know, uh, where now to be fair, they get a set margin no matter what, but there's always going to be an arb there, particularly in these situations like in Puerto Rico, uh, or La Paz, or or in down in 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 in. Um, eventually down in Brazil, starting in next year and the year after where they own the power plants, where they're going to have a, a sort of a, a greater ARB there um, because of the fact that there is a set price that they're delivering into and there is no gas alternative except theirs. So yeah. what what are you going to do? Yeah. Uh, so can, if, if that one Brazilian plant alone can generate over a billion dollars, that's, you know. Well, Brazil is going to. The, 15% the, of its market cap in one year. Barcarena alone is, is in my opinion, about 2.7 billion top line revenue additional every year. So Once that's, that's like up and running. A third of its current market cap. At the well, they're basically, they'll double revenue in the next two years just from that one terminal. Never mind uh, Santa Catarina. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so there's 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 a lot here that, that it's going to continue to go that that you know you're gonna you're gonna see uh continued growth here um but i i think they're they're much more excited about brazil brazil is their long-term growth opportunity um yeah, makes sense. but to me this is this is a company i i think I, I have a price target on this very fair price target 57 57 dollars i think we get back to that all-time high by the end of this year sometime uh, then the sky's really the limit from there. Uh, there's still a lot of short interest outstanding. There's a lot of people that are bearish on this company. Pay them no mind. Long the stock and just sit back and ride it. This this is this is one of those where I have, you know, a, I have, yeah, a, I have a base I, case a base case at sixty and a a bull case longer term of triple digit stock. Just oh god, easily. Yeah, 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 anyway. easily. Anyway. Uh, we are going to wrap it up. Good, because it's been a while. <laughs> we got interrupted. Uh, but anyway, um, pleasure as always, <laughs> Chapman. Thank uh, you. Uh, viewers, you must subscribe to Proven Reserves. Uh, follow Chapman. Yes, on. please. Links will yeah, be. And you, and you can. Uh, and I'll, I'll have some updated numbers on NFE that's going to be get that's going to get a little bit more into the weeds on on what they're uh what i think their bottom line is going to be really going forward with particularly because of the right now we're going to see five dollars this year we're not adding brazil remember we're five dollars bottom line we're doubling bottom line this year brazil doesn't start until 2025 so there you go this just just by the by there so that's where you're going to see and again brazil's going to double Top line revenue. So you're going to potentially see, I mean, you know, if, if you're going to double top line revenue and you're going to maintain the same kind of profit, you could be at $10 a share here by 2027. Ridiculous. Uh, and, and the market is, and, and what's 30, the 33% what, earnings yield in, in that case on, yeah. like you said, any so, company. And the market is only, uh, and, the, and the current stupid analysts who don't know anything are currently saying like, Five and seventy five dollars and seventy seven gap earnings for twenty twenty seven. I think it could be closer that, to ten. They're, they're also saying it's going to be like one point five in billion in EBITDA this year when they went back and adjusted EBITDA was looking at about two point five. So I mean they're they're all over the shop. They're not they're not look they're not even listening to the company presentation because they yeah, did yeah. that in the, in the previous presentation. Well, and to be fair, all right. To be fair, 
Okay, and 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 I'm just very quickly here for great everybody's edification about this. Uh New Fortress Energy and what New Fortress Energy is and what the plan for New Fortress Energy to be only really occurred, started to occur in the last two quarters. Okay, that's when, you know, because before that, they were building all this infrastructure and they were selling a whole bunch of cargo sales. So it's like, okay, well, you're doing these cargo sales like, are you an LNG company? What, what, what's going on here? No, no, they're an infrastructure company. Um, and, 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 and it's sort of become clear here and they said, you know, Hey, we expect significant earnings increase into fourth quarter. Nobody really believed them. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's a little bit frustrating. I think the bullish catalyst here and you guys, it's still that you, you still got time to get on board this train, but I think when they announce first liquids, I think that's a 10% up day. And then you're going to have a little bit of consolidation there. And then when they announce the first cargo sometime in April, that's another 10% update. And, and that. from there, it just very quickly to look at that, you know, if, if you're to, if you were to go up, like, let's say 20% from here, you are uh, pretty much about 40 bucks. So I think you're going to have like a 10% update. You get a little bit more beyond that and then another 10% update. And then I think you're going to be in the mid forties by april so that's where i think it's gonna happen i mean i that that's a little crazy it's a little you know it's like i know it's nfe uh, nfe has a nfe has a tendency of being a little bit disappointing <laughs> but guys this one's a long-term hold it really did. it's it's uh you don't have to put mess around with the options market here or do anything else to juice this this is this is one of those where it's just like you're gonna forex this on in four years easily oh, yeah. so indeed well, there we have it. Thank you very much, sir, guys. Uh, links in the description. Do your own due diligence. And I look forward to seeing you in another episode of the RY podcast shortly. Take care, guys. <laughs>